people have been talking to me online about how Darth Vader is such a bad person. It's very clear and it's very well established from those actions. But if you can't look and see the Anakin blowing up the Death Star. Anakin blowing up the Death Star. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. And may God have mercy on your soul. When you have actors like that, is it any wonder that the show they're in is getting annihilated online? Well, it turns out it's not entirely their fault. It's a whole conspiracy of dunces with the Acolyte. A show so bad that not even the shills over at IGN could say anything positive about it. But exactly what are fans saying about the show now that the first few episodes are out? Is the Acolyte really that bad? And is this the end of Star Wars as a franchise? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. Let's face facts. No one was looking forward to this show after the disaster that was the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and all the other garbage that's been vomited out onto Disney+. Plus. But just based on the comments section on my videos, YouTube seems to be showing my content to the still brainwashed normie apologists and not people who have seen the light, so let me illuminate you, wonderful viewers. The Acolyte sucks. There, I said it, plain and simple. But I'll break it down for you by story, character development, acting, and cinematography so you don't waste your time with this trashy derivative drivel. First things first, the plot synopsis for this show's first two episodes is as follows. The Acolyte is a police procedural set in a galaxy far, far away. The story goes like this. Qui-Gon Trinity is murdered by mysterious mask diverse female, but it turns out that she's got a twin who is a failed Jedi. They've also been separated for 16 years and somehow have the same hairstyle. It's basically two flavors of female Rick James. I'm Rick James, bitch. So it's up to the Jedi Order to track her down and find out who her trainer is. If that was the end of it, I'd say, okay, fine, let me see some more. But since this was written by the woke millennial hipster and Harvey Weinstein assistant, Leslie Headland, we have to dive further into the smoldering pile of shit that lays before us. And the cause of the stink? Well, it's the writers of the show, or should I say, writer, Leslie Headland. The writing on the show is so piss poor, I actually began to feel sorry for Headland and angry about the American education system that produced such a mediocre student. From the story elements to the dialogue, the writing was absolutely atrocious. The dialogue was so bad because it was written in a colloquial style that doesn't fit into the nature and feel of Star Wars proper. Let me show you what I mean. You finally passed your trials. I made night. Now watch this scene and tell me that the dialogue style isn't radically different. For my ally is the Force, and the powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings so we, not this crude matter. Now, I know that not everyone speaks in jumbled grammar like Yoda, but you don't make Jedi, you become a Jedi Knight. This is a sort of colloquial dialogue that is so out of place for Star Wars, and it goes back to the writing. My guess is that schools are no longer teaching formal writing as much as they used to. Writing all across every type of media has degraded down to a very simplistic level. And on top of that, no one knows how to speak properly anymore. And I can't say that texting has helped the situation either. The point is that the dialogue in this show is so clunky that it really takes the viewer out of it. If it was just the writing, then I maybe could excuse it. But the acting is so bad in this show, it seems no one can act except for Qui-Gon Trinity and Jedi Squid Game. And Trinity gets killed in the first five minutes of the show. Speaking of Qui-Gon Trinity, the fight choreography in this scene is just laughably bad. The effects and cinematography are very poorly edited. It absolutely looks like they did it slowly and then sped up the footage in post. After all, Carrie Ann Moss is a middle-aged woman still trying to do her Matrix moves 
and it shows. I've got nothing against old Carrie Ann. I think she's a phenomenal actress, but she's not doing herself any favors being in this trash heap of a show. So it's probably best for her career to not be associated with it any further. And as for her killer, female Rick James is played by Amandla Stenberg, who can't act to save her life. She can't emote expressions on her face whatsoever, and she really just got thrust into a role in which she had little acting experience to pull off. What's worse is that the showrunners have her playing two different characters, but she doesn't have the experience to be able to make them distinct. I think Leslie Headland and the casting couch didn't do Stenberg any favors. They hired someone totally inexperienced based solely on the color of her skin and not her acting ability. And then she's going to be the one to catch all the heat for not performing well. I really do feel bad for Stenberg. She was really set up to fail due to DEI diversity hiring policies at Disney. And what gets me is that she's pretty innocent in all this. Her only flaw is that she's too inexperienced, something that's totally under her control if she weren't being manipulated by racist DEI policies. And speaking of racism and bigotry, wow, is this show full of it. First, there's not a single straight white male on the show until the second episode, and Jedi Dalsim Yoga Flame gets killed before he can even utter a single line of dialogue. To add insult to injury, don't think we didn't notice having the character commit suicide. That scene was totally Leslie Headland saying, if you're a straight white male, you should go kill yourself. And speaking of other not so subtle messaging, don't think I didn't notice the choice of color for the character's wardrobes either. All the Jedi seem to be wearing yellow, while female Rick James prominently displays purple. At first, I thought this could be because it's set earlier in the Star Wars timeline, but then I realized that Leslie Headland is sending a message here. Now, I'm not too familiar with the alphabet soup flags, so I had to look this one up. It looks like yellow represents those whose gender falls outside of the binary, and purple represents those that, whose gender identity falls somewhere between male and female. So basically, all Jedi are now non-binary. Leslie Headland even said so herself in interviews. This is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really don't have to insert alphabet soup ideology into Star Wars, right? Humans come in one of two flavors, male and female. You could go nuts with the gendering of aliens, which I wouldn't have a problem with. With aliens, the possibilities are endless. But hey, it's Disney's iteration of Star Wars, so you have to have THE MESSAGE inserted into every piece of content. And that's just the thing, right? Political ideology trumps story and character development on the Acolyte. Now, I need you to hear me very clearly here, dear viewer. I have absolutely no problem at all with any kind of political ideology being inserted into media. What I do have a problem with is when the insertion of political ideology trumps or takes precedence over good story and good character development. I'll show you what I mean. Take a look at a movie like Dallas Buyers Club. That movie is filled with political and gender ideology, but it has a good story with excellent character development where the audience can get invested in the characters. Jared Leto absolutely killed it in that role as a transgender woman and he made it a character you could really root for because you understand where it was coming from. But with The Acolyte, the writing tells us everything we need to know without showing us. And that's the golden rule of writing. Show. Don't. Tell. Now, as far as the other nitpickings I have with the writing are pretty obvious ones. First, Leaving a criminal essentially unattended by a single droid and chairs that turn into pilots has to quite possibly be the dumbest tactical decision a character has made in the entirety of Star Wars. It basically happened because the whole story would be over if she made it to the prison on Coruscant. Additionally, female Rick James staring at the fire on her spacewalk is laughable. Rather than hiring DEI experts, maybe they should have hired someone who didn't fail high school chemistry class. Any moron knows that you can't really have fire in the vacuum of space without an oxygen source. 
but I guess it's more important to have racism's bastard child of DEI than to have something so simple make sense. The chemistry must be respected. Overall, the first two episodes of the show basically accentuate the fact that Star Wars is dead. And if what Chris Gore said was true about the lesbian birth in the third episode, then I can't see any way for normie audiences to stick around. But in my other Acolyte video where I only talked about the fan baiting, I did have someone in the comment section sing this show praises. I honestly don't know how anyone can like this trash. There's obviously no accounting for bad taste. You're always gonna have simps shilling for shows and not engaging in critical thinking. Because as Red Letter Media has told us, Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. And that's just it with the Acolyte. The only people left watching are those without any critical thinking skills and YouTubers like myself, Nerdrotic, Critical Drinker, who are just watching it for the views on our own channels. One thing is for certain though, this is gonna get a whole lot worse before it gets better. Or Star Wars is just dead. But what do you guys make of all this? Is Star Wars truly dead? Or are you one of the remaining people that actually liked the show? And what exactly did you like about it? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one!